What's up? Make sure I don't knock this thing over. Waiting for some folks to join. I don't see anybody on the live yet. So, let's see. Where are the folks? Hello. So, I want to give folks a little bit of time to join us. Um, but happy that you're here. Today we're going to, I'm just going to be giving a... Um, an update about COVID-19 vaccines. So hopefully you'll stick around. Waiting to see if we get some more folks in. I feel like I need some music playing, like elevator music. I'm going to give another minute or so and then I'll get started. I don't know where everyone is today. Oh, shoot. I'm hoping I wasn't supposed to log into my own. What's up? Excuse the sirens in the background. <laughs> no, they're not DC sirens. I'm not in DC. At right now, how could, how did you know that? All right, well, I'm going to get started. Um, so again, today I want to give an update about COVID-19. Um, so I'm David uh, Wilson. If you haven't seen me on here before, my pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I've been a Whitman Walker influencer for well over a year now. So I've come on here to talk about STI, sexual health practices. Um, we talk about COVID-19. We talk about mental health awareness. And we talk about a bunch of things. But today, I'm focusing on COVID-19 and having a discussion about the vaccination rate. So I've done a few lives in the past about COVID-19, um, but today I'll be on for about 15, 15 to 20 minutes to answer any of those questions that you still might have about the vaccine. So feel free to drop them in the comments if you do have any of those question, questions. Um, as you probably all know, uh, vaccines have now been available for anyone who who's 16 or over. 
And that has been a, a, an announcement that was made about three weeks ago across the U.S. So pretty much anyone who is 16 over can get a vaccine um, today. But the sad truth is actually that even with that amazing news, we've actually discovered that vaccination rates have decreased. So that, since this announcement, for whatever reason, we have slowed our rate of vaccination. People are not opting in to get that vaccine as quickly as we anticipated. Um, and that's unfortunate. So when I last discussed this topic, uh, we projected that about 70% of the U.S. population would have at least received one dose of a vaccine um, by July 4th. That projection has shifted. Um, that projection now is, again, in the past we thought 70% would be vaccinated by July 4th. That has stretched out, and we're kind of looking at that uh, to be around August 24th. I actually have a graphic that was produced by the CDC. Um, if you look at the first data point that's on there, we hit the target of having 40%, 46% of those of our population um, vaccinated. And when I say vaccinated, I mean that it, they be received at least one dose of the vaccine. On August 25th, you can see that our projection shifted when previously it was expected that we would have about 70% of the population that has received one dose of some sort of vaccine, whether that be Pfizer, Moderna, or J&J. Um, again, that shifted out to August 24th. So our rate, it was kind of like this, but now it's shifted down now. So we're actually not projected to be 90% vaccinated, one dose vaccinated until November. This is an issue um, because if we stay on that rate, uh, dec like decrease, then we're never going to reach the capacity at which we're able to control um, and manage this this virus. So, um, as I mentioned, like you know, providers are so we are slowing down, but providers are currently administering about two point one two million doses per day. Um, that's like the daily average, um, and that's about a thirty seven percent decrease from. Uh, April, I mean, sorry, April 13th. Around April 13th, we were actually vaccinating 3.3 uh, million folks per day on average. And so now that's 2.12 million. That's over a million per day of doses of the vaccine that we are now not administering to people. Um, experts have actually estimated that between 70 and 90 percent of America's need, Americans need to get vaccinated in order to decrease the cases in deaths to more manageable levels. At this pace, at where we are today, we're still having trouble managing this vaccine. Um, hospitals are still overloaded. And so in order to ever get or regain some sense of normalcy, we're gonna have to encourage people to get vaccinated. The fact of the matter is like, we really just cannot defeat this virus with only 50% of adults getting vaccinated. Like that's just not gonna happen. So where we stand today, we need to shift our, shift our priority a little bit to get more people vaccinated. We need more people to get vaccinated. So we are asking that you encourage your family, your friends, your enemies and your frenemies to get vaccinated. Um, also, there has been some discrepancy across the country uh, when I, in terms of pace of the of vaccination. So, for example, uh, folks who are living in D.C., uh, New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, they've all provided um, at least 50 percent of this population with at least one dose of the vaccine. Now, you have, on the other hand, uh, states like Wyoming and West Virginia, Idaho, Louisiana, those states, for whatever reason, um, have only vaccinated under 40 percent of their population. So 40 percent of their population have received at least one dose. And in some of those states, it's actually as low as 30 percent. I think it was uh, West Virginia was around 34 percent and Wyoming was around like 32 percent. And so they could do a lot better, to be completely honest. So these there are several states in the South, in the West, who are just vaccinated at a smaller share of the population than other regions, particularly in the North and in the Northeast. Um, in December, federal regulators, federal regulators gave an emergency authorization of two 
doses uh, of, of, of a two dose vaccines. Those two dose vaccines were Pfizer and Moderna. And then you had the one dose vaccine, um, J&J. Obviously, the J&J uh, vaccine had been in the news recently um, because it uh, was some reports of some folks receiving complications. So um, the vaccine was uh, authorized for emergency use back in February. And then we paused that on April 13th because of reports of blood clots in a very, very small number of patients. So the government has since ended that Johnson & Johnson pause. That pause actually ended on April 23rd. So we had a 10-day pause of the J&J vaccine where we couldn't where it was not recommended to administer that particular vaccine to anyone at that time. But since April 23rd, um, the CDC and the FDA have now said it's okay to resume vaccinations with that particular vaccine. And we're hoping that with that news, that that helps shoot that pace of vaccination back up to where we were before these sort of announcements. Um, I'm hoping that 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 particular J&J vaccine did not cause, you know, this decrease just based off of perception and things that people are thinking. But we just want you all know that the CDC, FDA have all said that it's okay to get that J&J vaccine. The risk of people experiencing those side effects are extremely, extremely low. And you still have two other options. You have the Moderna option and you have the Pfizer option. And you can actually ask what when you find a vaccination site. You can actually ask what, you know, uh, version of the vaccine they're, they're providing, um, if that is a concern for you to, 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 you know, if that is a concern. Like, you can totally ask what they're administering and find a location, site-specific location, um, if you have a, a particular preference. I do want to say that D.C. has since transitioned from a pre-registration format to entirely uh, walk-up. That's either at mass vaccination sites or other independent sites. But for more information on those no appointment walk up sites in D.C., you can visit coronavirus.dc.gov forward slash vaccinate D.C. And you can find out more information about pre-registration for those walk up um, centers and, and mass vaccination sites. Maryland actually encourages its residents to use a website to find an appointment. But it is also starting to offer walk up mass vaccination sites as well. You can also visit Maryland's website by and find an appointment by visiting their site, which is coronavirus.maryland.gov forward slash pages forward slash vaccine. And I'll repeat that for you. It is coronavirus.maryland.gov forward slash pages forward slash vaccine. Um, Virginia has some very limited walk up capacity, um, but it's mostly done on a county level. And residents will have a much easier time if they just go to a website and go to the website for vaccines and then actually call um, ahead of time. Uh, so you can actually visit Virginia's website, which is vaccinate.virginia.gov to find more information about those sites and the phone numbers um, in respect to the sites. Some new news that I learned yesterday was actually the federal government has a vaccination site as well now. So you can visit www.vaccines.gov. And what's really cool about this website is that you can actually search, you can enter your zip code and you can search what um, vaccination site is closest to you based on your zip code. What's even more cool about this offering is that if you text, here's the number 438829, um, your zip code to that number. So if you text 438829 with your zip code, they can also refer you to a vaccination site that's close to you. So again, I want to <laughs> recite that one. It's 438829. Text, that's the text number. And then you text your zip code as well. And you can get um, a vaccination site. Um, are there any questions? I don't see any questions yet. All right. Well, again, I mean, the entire purpose of this live was to let you know that vaccination rates have slowed down. Uh, we are not projected to hit our 70 percent one dose vaccine. I'm trying to figure out the best way to say that one. Uh, we have not hit, we are not on target to hit 70 percent 
percent of at least 70 percent of the population receiving one dose of the vaccine. There we go. Um, until August 24th. Previously, that was projected to be July 4th. So we're a little behind schedule here. So we need you all to actually go out, encourage your family and friends to get vaccinated. That's really why I'm here today. I want to just encourage you all to get vaccinated. I want you to help me encourage our friends and family to get vaccinated. So please, 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 please help me do that. Um, I want to remind you all that Whitman Walker is open for free HIV and SDI testing by appointment at our Liz location in Northwest DC, as well as our location in Southeast DC. You can make an appointment by calling 202-797-4439. Also want to remind you all that social distancing is still and have been one of the best ways to reduce COVID-19 community trans transmission. That actually means that you must continue to increase your physical space between people. We recommend that be six feet away, continue to wear your mask in public, avoid places with large crowds, encourage work from home, um, continue to speak with your loved ones over FaceTime if you're not fully vaccinated yet. Um, if you don't know, the CDC did kind of reduce the mask requirements for fully vaccinated people, which is more reason and an incentive for you to get um, vaccinated. I think there are questions. All right, someone, I'm jumping in. <laughs> question. Oh, I did. I've never seen the question, <laughs> the question button. So thank you for pointing that out. I did not know that exists. So I'm not an anti-vaxxer at all. But what do you say to people who've seen the coincidental deaths of young people shortly after taking the shot? Um. I actually think you laid the statement out very clearly. Um, so far, we have not heard of any deaths being uh, contributed to by a vaccination. And so you use the key word there, coincidental. I think that's exactly what happened in any of case that we heard about in deaths. Like it was a coincidental thing. It didn't necessarily result from the vaccine itself. I know that could be a whole bunch of miscommunication, whether that be social media and news outlets that may give a false uh, perception that, that that was caused by the vaccine. But as of today, we don't have any knowledge um, that indicates that uh, the vaccine caused a death. So I hope that answered your question. And, and in terms of perception, I mean, I think that's something that us as community members, we just have to help manage. Um, this is why I'm here talking about this today to let you know that I don't have any information that indicates that people are dying from this vaccine. So um, I'm doing my due diligence to just educate people. And I encourage you all to take the information that I'm providing and share across your platforms as well. So as of today, I do not have any knowledge of any deaths that have been contributed to by the vaccine. There have been some coincidental things that have been reported in news outlets and things like that, but we can't attribute those to the vaccine at this time. Um, but that was a great question. How do you, how do I post on my page? Um, if you wanna share um, this, this live, um, you can DM us and we can figure out a way to, to work it out. Uh, and. and I uh, guess that's the best solution at this point. Um, you can also repost or reshare on your social media platforms. Once I'm done, I will save this to our Whitman Walkers page and it'll be available. So you can also share it on your platforms. But that's also a great question. Um, any more questions? All right. Again, continue to wash your hands. Continue to follow us. Stay up to date on local, state, and national guidelines for testing, quarantine, and general safety. If you do not feel well, stay home. Um, we have given so much advice about like the differences between allergies and COVID-19. So I definitely encourage you to go revisit some of our previous lives that talk about symptoms of you know maybe allergies versus those of a COVID-19 and just help you understand uh, what you need to watch out for. So I know we've done tons of those type of uh, Instagram lives, so please go check them out. Continue to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram at Whitman Walker, and also follow us at RealTalkDC underscore, and we'll help you stay up to date on all things Whitman Walker Health, all things COVID-19, and we are just here to provide as much information we can about 
sexual health practices, HIV, STIs, et cetera, et cetera. You got a friend in me. Um, I'm Sir underscore Dave on Instagram, so you can follow me as well. I share things there, but um, I hope I answer all your questions. And I will see you all next week. Bye.